May Agnes Fleming was a Canadian writer. She was born in 1840 in Carlton, New Brunswick, the daughter of Bernard and Mary Early. Her first novel was published in 1863. She wrote around 30 novels, but the exact amount is debated due to her use of pseudonyms. In 1865, she married John W. Fleming. That year, she moved to New York and died in 1818 in Brooklyn of Bright's disease. We will review her 1876 The Midnight Queen. Taking place during one night in London in 1665 during the height of the plague, we see Sir Norman Kingsley meet his friend Malcolm Ormiston, who insists on going to visit the sorceress the mask, whose gimmick is she wears a mask. Ormiston is in love with her, despite never having seen her face, for which he is chided vigorously by Sir Norman. When Norman goes to the mask, he is shown a very strange vision of a royal court and a queenly woman, into whose side he is to plunge a dagger. Just as he and Ormiston discuss the vision, an old woman runs shrieking from a nearby house. The two then go in and find a dead woman dressed as a bride, who looks exactly as the woman in Norman's vision. So he falls in love with a dead girl despite her also having the plague. Taking her along in a car to the plague pit, they find she is still alive and named Leoline and the enthralled Norman brings her to his house, before he also declares his wish to murder said woman's husband, if she was married, to get her to himself. He then goes to fetch a doctor, but when they return they find the lady gone. Taking Le Masque's hint as to where his vision is to be realised, Norman rides out to an old ruin outside of London, saving a man from some highwaymen along the way. The man turns out to be the villainous Count Lestrange, who had pressured Leonine to marry him, but before Norman can do much about that, he meets the villainous dwarf Caliban, who warns Norman from coming anywhere near the old ruin. He does go anyway, and after removing some tiles, sees a royal court presiding over highwaymen and robbers, along with some real dukes and earls, ruled over by Caliban and by Miranda, the Midnight Queen, and a twin to his Leoline. In the meantime, Leoline is found and brought home, after jumping into the River Thames, by Ormiston, who also pressures the mask to promise to remove her mask. She is hesitant, and foretells his doom if she does, but he is obstinate. Norman leaves the ruin, finds Leoline at her house, convinces her to marry him tomorrow, and then rides off again for no reason to go spy at the court at the ruin. And of course Lestrange shows up when he is gone, and abducts Leoline to his house. And Norman falls through the ceiling of the ruin, and is seized by the robbers, seeing them behead a man who betrayed them before. The dwarf relishing and doing the same to Norman in only a few minutes. The delay is due to sympathy from Queen Miranda, but he is still stuck into a cell to await his doom. Then Miranda herself shows up, tells him she is a captive of the dwarf, tells him he murdered more people than just the one, and tells Norman to kill him before he can kill Norman. And Norman refuses, saying that defending himself from a serial murderer intending to kill him would be murder. Then he is told to at least go and fetch the king and his men. And he refuses too, since he knows some of the people in the band who are noblemen, and refuses to inform on them. After not one of them said anything when he was doomed to die, Miranda goes to stab the dwarf herself, and Norman disallows this too, and stabs her on accident when trying to stop her, before running off through a hidden passageway. When he comes back, he finds Leonine gone and Ormiston dead in the street, having died once he saw a mask without a mask. He meets Count Lestrange, and they go back to the ruin together with a band of armed men, as the Count is really King Charles II. Fighting Caliban and Code of the Death, they are early enough to see Miranda alive and cause her death from shock. Then it's back to London to learn Leoline's secret history from the mask, before she throws herself into the plague pit after Ormiston. Norman is then married to Leoline and they move to Devonshire. The novel seems rather confused. The Midnight Queen and Caliban are very incidental, and take up only a small part of the story. While Charles's unmasking and eventual good guy turn, leaves the book without a proper antagonist. 